So what does that mean? So let, let's just quickly do a biology lesson for those who haven't been in high school for a while. So the, the genome we know, DNA genome, epigenome is the organization of that DNA and it, the epigenome tells the cell that they should turn on this gene to be a nerve cell and in a liver cell, turn on that gene to be a liver cell. And that's epigenetics. And cells inherit that information just as much as they inherit their DNA. Um, so in my book, what I, I am proposing is that those two types of information, genomic and epigenomic, um, they're quite different. The genomic, the DNA is digital, which is very well preserved and can last a long time. We know that DVDs last longer than cassette tapes. Um, but the problem for the epigenome is that it's analog information and anyone who's had a cassette tape uh, or a, a, a record knows that you can, you can pretty easily scratch these or lose the information. Um, in fact, you can scratch a DVD uh, and lose the information. We actually think that aging is similar to those scratches, that the information to be young again is still largely in our bodies, but we can access, our cells can access that information just by, you know, metaphorically scrubbing the DVD or polishing it up so that the cell can read the, the right genes, of, in the case of the DVD, the right song. Uh, so with that in mind, let me explain what we've discovered. If, so we literally have, not literally, but metaphorically have a way of scratching a mouse's epigenome. And the way we do that is actually we cut the DNA. We create these double strand breaks, let the cell heal them without making mutations. So there's no change to the digital information but what we see is the process of proteins moving around and trying to repair that DNA eventually introduces this epigenomic noise and the genes that were once on, many of them get turned off and those that were once off come on. And so liver cells start to lose their identity, skin cells start to lose their identity. Um, and the consequence we think is aging and we actually will hopefully publish a paper that shows that if you create this noise in a mouse, it will go through accelerated aging. Uh, and not just looking old, it is actually literally old. If we measure the, the epigenetic clock, uh, and I think many of your uh, listeners and viewers will know that there's a clock you can measure from blood in our bodies or in a mouse, and it'll tell you how old the animal is or we are biologically. If we do that with our mice that we've scratched up, they are literally, molecularly, 50% older, which is great. Okay, but you might say, well, David, that, that's all fun, but why do we care about making a mouse older? Well, first of all, it's good evidence that we're right about the hypothesis, that every aspect of aging is recapitulated. Second of all, we have mice now that we can change the rate of aging and perhaps even accelerate aging so that they behave more like humans and we can p potentially have a better mo mouse model for Alzheimer's, for example. But then the third thing is if you can give an animal something, then you can actually with that knowledge, take it away. And that's what we've done with George in collaboration with George. What we did actually was we wanted to reprogram the cells so that the, the genes that were once, let's start with this, the ones on, um, now they, they go back off and vice versa. So genes that were once off come back on. And the, what we find is that by using these three Yamanaka factors, you can actually find the original information in the cell that tells it to be young again. And those genes actually switch and uh, the cell behaves like it's young again. And in the case of the, the retina, uh, we have preliminary results that uh, we can actually restore eyesight by rejuvenating the, the nerves in the retina to be young again. Um, and so that's uh, early days of what I hope is the future where we can reprogram cells in the body. It doesn't have to be the retina, it can be any cell type in the body, we think, uh, to actually not just act young, but literally be molecularly young again yeah, and in my career i've seen a lot of cool stuff and, and i haven't seen anything this cool before 